growth. It is a part of the natural order of things. It is something that happens in the lifespan of every creature and every organization. And with growth comes change. When you have a small church, the minister takes care of just about everything. He or she is pretty much entrusted by the congregation with the running of the church. When a church grows in size, the organization changes. You have a board of trustees and staff. You have religious education programs and a music director. The board oversees the staff and the budget and along with the minister manages the programs of the church. As the church continues to grow, the organization becomes more complex. Now you have committees that maintain the property, that focus on new members, that deal with community outreach, youth programs, and stewardship, and the board is charged with overseeing everything that goes on. Throughout this whole process, the organization is continually changing. Sooner or later, it is time to change the way things are organized to bring more people into the management process. Policy governance is the name given to the style of management that our church is changing to. It has been around since the 1990s and has been adopted by more than 30 UU churches around the country. In fact, UUA, the Unitarian Universalist Association, is in the process of switching over to the policy governance model of leadership. People have a lot of questions. Questions! Questions! Lots and lots of questions. Do you have the answers to people's questions? Well, no. So, why are you doing this video? Excuse me? If you don't have the answers, maybe you should ask someone who knows what he's talking about. Oh, and I suppose you know all about policy governance. Uh, policy what? Maybe we should find someone who knows how policy governance works. By the way, what's your name? Socket. Come on, Socket. Let's go get some answers. <laughs> let's, let's see if we can find someone to talk, someone else to talk to. Um, ah, here. Da -da 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 um, pardon me. Do you know anything about policy governance? Um, a, a little bit. A little bit. Uh, I think we need to know a lot. Who can we talk to? Ah! It tickles! Uh, what's your name? No, that's just a prank. <laughs> My name's Socket. Oh, Socket. I, I, I checked your hand, but I'm afraid you'd bite it off. Um, if you can find my hand, you can shake it. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, we could go in, in the sanctuary if you'd like. Oh, okay. Where's the sanctuary? It's uh, it's right that way. That way? Right there. Okay. So here we go. Okay. Okay. That guy's never going to come back here again. Oh, he's still living here today. He's not He'll be back. He'll be back. So, policy governance. Yes. What does that mean? Policy governance. Well, um, policy governance is a, it's kind of a new way of looking at the organizational structure at, at our church. It, it's, it's going on in many, many new churches throughout the country. And a lot of nonprofit organizations are also doing it. And essentially, what happens is the role of the board and the minister and the staff and the lay leadership starts to change. Where the board in the past was involved with a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff, mm -hmm. um, now the board will be more responsible for kind of visionary kind of things. And the lead minister and the staff will be responsible for implementing the policies, the, 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 what's called the end statements that the so, board develops. So the board used to do things and now they're going to let committees and other people do more stuff? Staff and the lay leadership. They'll be responsible for implementing the policies that the board sets. Now you may be wondering where do these policies come from? Where do the policies come from? What a good question. It actually will come from the <laughs> congregation. It'll come from our mission covenant statement, mm -hmm. and it'll, be, it'll come from the needs that the congregation expresses. So the role of the board will be to listen to the congregation, and as they express needs, to form them in, in, uh, in uh, or articulate, to give voice to them in the form of what's called end statements or policy. 
So what's going to change as far from a congregational perspective? <laughs> well, what a good question. Um, how, what I do you, liked it. <laughs> uh, you, mean, you mean for you, like a member of the congregation, how is it going to yeah, be different? Yeah, yeah, someone comes to church, what's going to look different? No, I, actually, you know, for a member of the congregation coming to Sunday worship or, or even, you know, coming during the week to be in committees or part of church life, it, you, you're not going to see much of a change. Um, but for the person who wants to get more involved, Mm -hmm. in, in the life of the church or like who, me? like you, okay. if you want to start like a puppet group, a puppet committee, for example, a puppet Woo! regime, any of those things, um, it, there'll be a process. It'll be easier for people to get more involved in the, in the flow of church life. Um, but it, we're not going to see dramatic changes in, in terms of what it means to be a UU or, or to be a member of UUCDC. The, the, the lead minister primarily, but also through the lead minister, the staff, and the, and the, and the lay leadership, um, will, will, will have la great latitude in implementing mm -hmm. those, those end statements, those policies. However, the system also has checks and balances. So there are also limitations that we're going to put on the lead minister, boundaries, if you will. So it, it's really kind of a system of checks and balances, but what it does is it empowers the staff and the lay leadership um, to, to do the, the great work and to do it without hindrance, without, um, so. Can I go now? Yeah, your arm must be, I mean, your mouth must be really tired. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, yeah, watch the girl. <laughs> well, thank that's, you, it's that's been that's nice. Uh, well, yeah. thank you. Bye. Ah! because I don't think anyone can hear me at all from here. Well, um, uh, how about we go into Peter's office? It doesn't seem to be used right now. That might be a quiet spot. Okay, let's go. Go ahead. So, um, Jody, tell me about the Lay Leadership Council. The Lay Leadership Council is like um, a staff meeting of all of the volunteers that volunteer to lead the programs in the congregation. So um, all of the committee chairs or representatives from committees will um, come together once a month to make decisions as a, as a group. Um, the chair of the Lay Leadership Council will be elected by the congregation, just like board members are elected, uh -huh. at annual meetings. Uh -huh. And um, then there will be uh, five ministry team leaders who um, will be uh, appointed by the committees that are within a ministry team. Have you, Socket, have you learned about ministry teams? Um, no! <laughs> we have five ministry teams and the ministry teams are groups of um, committees that are trying to do similar things and it's a way for them to get together and work together more in order to accomplish what they're trying to do. So, mm -hmm. for example, there's a ministry team called Congregational Care, and that includes our caring committee, the folks that, ha that organize us to help make meals and provide rides for people who are in need. It also in includes the lay pastoral care folks, those are the folks that are helping Peter um, to provide spiritual emotional care for people who are in need. What do these teams have to do with the Lay Leadership Council? Well, the um, Congregational Care uh, Ministry Team will appoint a representative that will um, attend all of the Lay Leadership Council meetings so that every time there is a decision that's going to be made about how or what we're going to do, do something in the church, um, the representation, there will be representation there from the Congregational Care Ministry Team. And this will be the same with the other four ministry teams, so that we get a broad representation in our decision-making process. We're going to have these different ministry teams and they're going to be there, but the other committees, aren't they going to be there too? Absolutely. The Lay Leadership Council is open to all and we hope and encourage wide attendance. We want committee members 
who um, want to be involved in this decision-making process to be there. The, the appointed members from the five ministry teams is just to make sure that on any given meeting we do have representation from all of the different areas amongst the church. Okay, well, thank you. I think I understand it now. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> You're welcome, Socket. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Bye. Bye.